Okay, now it's time once again to get down to real life. Focusing again on the 16 pedals, what do you truly desire or wish for? What do you really want to create in your life? These pedals represent the elements or different forms of energies and powers through which your soul or your inner self understands. It interacts with these energies and powers and explores the outside world with them. As I mentioned previously, you can gain mastery over these elements by becoming more in tune to the subtle energies that lay deep within yourself and activating them through various practices contained within this course. In a very real sense, the spark of creation is ignited at this level. From here, anything is possible. Your sperm or your egg, it's the form of creation. It's the only thing that we can physically say that is of magic. It's pure, pure magic. How is a baby born? Scientists still cannot figure out when the sperm goes into the egg, how it turns into a cell, how it turns into two, four, eight, and it just multiplies and it turns into a human being. That is the true power of the magic that we're going to be tapping into in this level. And that's why it's so real. I discovered what I really wanted in my life by just becoming present in my reality. I focused on how I was feeling in certain situations, how I was feeling about who was surrounding me in my life, my friends, my family, my community, who they were at their core and how that made me feel. If I didn't feel as though they were in alignment with me, I started to back off. I really just started to back away from people and stop being friends with them. Now, obviously, I wouldn't ignore them and stuff like that, but that's what I had to do. I ultimately realized that they were not me, and I was trying to be someone I wasn't. And that's when I realized I was not being me. And I realized that I've been living a lie almost my whole entire life, and I needed to break free from this American dream to make money and be rich and live a life of ultimate abundance, which is still the case these days, but not in the sense of money. The dream is more about me living who I want to be, feeling like I felt like when I was a kid, a young boy, like I knew the answer to life. In our youth, and when we're in the most innocent stages of our life, we know we have some kind of power. It's that ultimate power. Sometimes we bury that thing so deep within ourselves that it gets lost, and we get caught in this illusion of life, right? We have so many things to think about in life. Our families, our friends, our cars, our wealth, our weight, our looks, our car insurance, our speed limits, and, right, and all the laws that we have. We're not meant to live in systems like this. We just aren't. We are individual beings with infinite souls. And we're all here to do what we feel internally is the right thing to do. So now comes the really important part. I want you to do some serious soul searching here. What is it that you truly desire, truly want in your life? This is the exciting part. So no matter what you choose here, it's okay. Just try and make sure it's something that you deeply, deeply and strongly want. Take a few minutes to think about this, really feeling deep within your gut on what you desire. Write this down in your project book. The wheels are about to be set in motion. I briefly mentioned Napoleon Hill in the first level of Project Yourself. However, in this level and the levels to come, we're really going to be digging deep into his timeless wisdom and reality hacks to really tap into some of the tried and true keys of getting what you truly desire in life. You may not know this, but Hill started out with a very similar mindset to a lot of us, associating success with money. Hill remarked in one of his papers in his early career, when he was receiving large sums of money, he believed it was essential that he drove nothing less than a Rolls Royce. Well, sound familiar? It wasn't until later in his life that he learned that many other things besides money and material items are needed in order to truly have peace of mind. Now, that doesn't mean money doesn't serve a valuable purpose. It does. It's absolutely crucial. Look, you get it. I think you know where I'm coming from. There's something deeper within all of us. In this level, you'll hear about the power of desire, belief, and channeling, and using your energy in a more powerful way, and how to master your desires, and why sharing is key to being truly fulfilled. To start with, let's dive into how you can use desire and belief. You can use desire and belief to identify with, or get in touch with, what you truly want in your life. You see, desire is the starting point of all achievement. Merely wishing for something is not going to bring it to you, but desiring it with a state of mind that becomes an obsession, 
than planning definite ways and taking specific steps to acquire what you desire. It will work and it will bring it to you. As Napoleon Hill once said, Every person who wins an undertaking must be willing to burn his ships and cut all sources of retreat. Only by so doing can one be sure of maintaining the state of mind known as burning desire to win, essential to success. Now, this is not to put down the dreamer. There's a time and place for dreaming, coupled with desire, that is. For example, think about Christopher Columbus for a minute. He dreamed of an unknown world, and he staked his very life on the existence of it. He put a plan into action, and the rest is history. We briefly talked about Abraham Lincoln and how he went bankrupt twice. However, not many people even know this. Instead, most of us know how he went on to dream the end of slavery and put his dream into action. He barely missed living to see the United North and South translate his burning desires into reality. Fast forward to 2006. You ever see the movie The Pursuit of Happiness? Well, it's about a guy named Christopher Gardner, a guy that got exactly what Napoleon Hill was getting at regarding the burning desire, even if he didn't know Hill's work. Gardner and his son went through almost a full year struggle with homelessness while he pushed forward with his dream and burning desire to become a broker. In 1982, he completed his training program and went into full production as a retail broker, logging hundreds of calls to wealthy individuals in the quest to develop his own book. It was one of those long days of cold calling that Gardner caught the attention of a visitor to the office, Gary Shimano, the head of Bear Stearns San Francisco office. We didn't hire people who had graduate degrees. We hired people with a strong desire to be wealthy. Shimano was recalling the hungry 28-year-old with the military man's work ethic. Chris exemplified this desire, said Shimano. Another one of Napoleon Hill's foundational concepts is faith. I'm sure you've heard the phrase before, fake it till you make it. Well, I, as well as Napoleon Hill, would rather say, faith it till you make it. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't about religion. As Hill explained, it's about the realization of and the belief in getting what you desire. It's basically a state of mind, and it's one you can create or reach by simply giving repeated instructions to your subconscious mind. So, you may be asking, how on earth am I supposed to develop faith? Well, how to develop faith where it doesn't already exist is seriously difficult to describe and teach. As Hill said, it's as difficult as it would be to describe the color of red to a blind man who has never seen the color and has nothing with which to compare what you describe to him. You see, faith is a state of mind that you develop at will. Hill was right when he said, repetition of affirmations of orders to your subconscious is the only known method of voluntary development of the emotion of faith. To translate into project yourself terms, faith, if you don't have it already, is a state of mind that has to be developed voluntarily through applying and consistently using the tools provided to you to create or get what you desire. It's really, really that simple. And now, onto the most powerful tool inside Project Yourself. First, I would ask, what do you think these people, Lincoln, Shakespeare, Ben Franklin, Da Vinci, Branson, Depp, Forlilo, or Angelina Jolie all have in common? We've briefly touched on this before. It's the age-old practice of sexual transmutation, or what is referred to in Sanskrit as Varagya. Napoleon Hill was on it too. You see, the swamis and the yogis are onto it too. And yes, even modern day celebrities and entrepreneurs are onto it too, whether they know it or they don't. Don't let the name intimidate you. It's within every man and woman's ability to transmute some of his or her own sexual emotion into a dynamic drive which brings success. You see, sex energy is a phenomenal creative force. It's not just of pleasure, but of everything that is powerful and enduring. You see, personal magnetism is no different than sex energy. And there's a reason you bought this course. There's a reason you're showing up here right now, right here with me. And there's a reason why this was put together and we are all connected. You see, I created it and I use sex energy. You've probably heard of Nikola Tesla before. You know, Tesla cars. If not, here's the short and yet more informative version. 
He was an absolute, undisputed genius who invented sustainable electric power, the radio, the radar, an earthquake machine, and free wireless power. Yep, you heard it right. Up until the time he died, he was working on giving the whole entire world free wireless power. Unfortunately, he never got the funding to finish and eventually died mysteriously. Kind of interesting, right? Well, why am I bringing up Tesla? Well, it's somewhat of an unknown fact that he stayed a virgin, yep, no sex, until the very end. Instead, he was a master at focusing and transmuting that energy into all of his brilliant inventions and innovations. He's even credited as saying, if I had enough power, I would rip the world in half. And you know what? I don't half doubt that. 